بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعداءه مجمعنا قيام يوم الدين. In our previous session we mentioned about little bit about the authenticity of the Quran and how can the Quran be proven uh, to the Muslims and non-Muslims as an authentic book. So we mentioned that uh, uh, Quran is self-dependent. If you, you can't prove the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, without proving that Quran is a miraculous book. You can't prove the imamat of uh, our Aima Ali Musratusam without the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is dependent on the Quran. But Quran is self-dependent book. Quran, uh, Quran needs intellectual uh, uh, discussion and intellectual argument to prove its authenticity. So it's self. And by that, and it requires, and, uh, the tool is intellect. And intellect is something which is common between all the human beings, you see. But if you say the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, you Muslims, they say, you say Prophet Muhammad, but we are not Muslims. So this was one of the things we discussed, that Quran is self-dependent. <coughs> and how can we prove that uh, it's non-Muslims? In the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were impressed by the ling language structure of the Quran. Now the Orientalists, Many of the Orientalists, of course we said they are Orientalists anti-Quran, they are Orientalists pro-Quran. <coughs> Excuse me. The pro-Quran Orientalists, they support that Quran is an impressing, um, impressing book, amazing book. But the problem is they consider Quran a historical book which has been transmitted to them by history. We say the Quran is an impressive book, amazing book, but we say Quran is a miracle. So that's the difference between, one of the difference between pro-Orientalist, who's impressed by the Quran, and it's an amazing book, and we, the difference is we say it's, it was descended on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by angel Jibreel Alayhi Salam. That's it, and it was the, uh, written in the time of the Prophet. They say, we don't care about who descended Jibreel or who wrote it. Muhammad wrote it, his companion wrote it, whomsoever. What we are concerned is this book is now in our hand. So it came to us through history and it's an impressive book. Yes. And as I mentioned, some of the Orientalists say that it will require us ages and ages to, to do the researches of the Quran. And it was said by 1,400 years ago by Imam Ali alayhi salam that Quran is an ocean which never dries. So, so, so non-Muslims, there are non-Muslims, experts in Quran, experts in language, they testify. As same as the magicians, experts, they testify that uh, Mo Moses alayhi salatu salam brought miracle and not magic. Uh, the time of Jesus alayhi salatu islam, the medi medical professions, they said that, professionals, they said that this is a miracle, not something medicine can do. The same thing, people, they say Quran is an Arabic book. We can't understand Quran. How can you say it's a global book, it's a universal book? You see, eternal book? Yes, go to the experts. You are not an expert. Even in Arabs, those who know Arabic language, they can't nowadays, they can't sense the 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 the, the amazing the the, the amazing uh, aspect of the Quran. You have to refer to experts as previously as the same thing. Scientific concepts which are in the Quran you mentioned. How will you, I know that this is a scientific concept? <clears throat> the same thing. Go to the experts. Back in Quran, so many ayat are there. I'll just bring an example. If you see the mountains. If you see the mountains, الْجِبَالَ تَحْسَبُهَا جَامِدَةً you, fee, you will consider it uh, fast, stable, not moving. وَهِيَ مَرَّ السَّحَابِ But they are moving the movement of the clouds. Slow movement. The clouds, we don't feel it, we don't <coughs> sense it. <coughs> Similarly, the, 
the, uh, the, the mountains are moving, he don't sense the movement of the mountain. So now the question is, are the mountains moving or not? Don't tell me because Quran says so. Forget now Quran, just let's speak scientifically. Are the mountains moving? Or there's a metaphor here. Of the planet. Okay. Anyone else want to, you, the giants, the scientists? What do you think? Have you studied? Uh, no, I don't think they know. Well, no, I don't think they do. They don't know. So you think it's a metaphor? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, yeah, they don't move. Well, they don't move. It's a metaphor. Yeah. The plates do move. Mm -hmm. uh, plates by, by plates, I mean the piece of land on on so the. So it's literal. It's literally they're literally moving. Um, but yeah. What is it? So, yeah, it could be checked on its face. What is it? Yeah, I can't really move the mountains, but up one, move one, last one, last one, last one, last one. It's meant to move the boats. Okay, what do you think? More like so. Okay. <clears throat> the Quran says the mountains are moving continuously. So not just only on the earth day. Those days, those days, they thought it was a metaphor. You see how Quran fits every time. So when you're driving, you see mountain is there, and after some time the mountain is here. Correct? So, actually, the mountain is not moving. You are moving. But when it comes to the poetry, you make the moving things stable and stable things moving. You see? You make the moon like the moon is a face talking to you. You, you bring life to stable things. That's one of the Arabic balagha aspects. To give life to the table or to the chair. The chair... It's taking too much burden. Bless the heart of the chair. You have been sitting there five hours. You see, you give a living characteristics to something which doesn't live. So the mountains are moving. They are not moving. You're, you're just, it's just a metaphor. You consider, but they are moving. Slow movement. Those days they thought it's a metaphor. You know, when you ride a camel, so the mountain is moving slowly because you are moving slowly. You see? Nowadays, after the uh, uh, discovery of tectonic plates movement, so the mountains are on tectonic plates. So these tectonic plates are moving, but we can't sense their movement. Before, there was this one continent called Pangaea. Okay? The whole uh, Australia plus uh, Americas plus this Asia, Europe, it was one cluster of ground. Now we have separated like transatlantic, transpacific, all these distances. It took millions of years, this slow movement, slow, slow movement. It, it, it took distance of years, uh, I mean, millions of years to have this apart, the, uh, the crust of the earth. And now the modern latest theory says, no, the earth, this ball, blue ball, is expanding. So, because universe is expanding because of the gravity, gravity, gravity force, gravity force which is surrounding the earth and the planets. As universe is expanding, they're pulling the earth. You see, so when they're pulling the earth, obviously, um, um, have you inflated a balloon which is writing on it? No, you have. What happens to the writing? It gets stretched. You see. And you can put a microscope and you can see gaps in between those writing paints, you see. So they get, they get stretched. So the earth is getting stretched. You need to go home and try a balloon. Write your name and then see what happens to the rain. Okay. So it's, it stretches. The earth is stretching. So the distances are being created. So this kind of thing, who told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? that the earth is moving in a time where Persian civilization, Roman civilization, they did not have this delicate scientific fact. 
So who will tell the people that Quran? The, the scientists, they will say, they are non-Muslims. They say, wow, amazing. Quran is telling us, you see, literally the earth is moving. The mountains are moving. So that means the tectonic plate is moving. You see? So how did Prophet Muhammad know this thing? 1,400 years. Because Quran is to be, as we will say, Quran is to be taken literally unless if there is a clue which pushes us to take metaphorically. Those days, the intellectuals could not uh, uh, conceive or comprehend that, oh no, mountains cannot move, it's impossible. We are seeing mountains are stable. So it's a metaphor. So whenever you can't take the literal meaning, you have to take the metaphorical meaning. You see? And that's the beauty of the Arabic language. But here, you can take the meaning literally after 1,400 years. You see? The priority is take the literal meaning. If not, take the metaphorical meaning. But now, in this case, they took metaphorical meaning. But now, no, I can't take the literal meaning. So Quran literally tells me that the crust of earth is moving because they're holding the mountains. And that's one of the things that experts, if we if experts would not have discovered, we would have not known. And we could not have told the people. So now we can tell the people, refer to this uh, scholar, this scientist, this uh, research about the movement of the crust of earth. So we can let them refer to experts. So it's always about referring to the experts. So, uh, so the Quran is a miraculous book. Not everyone can understand it mirac its miraculous uh, ability, but those who are expert, they can and they testify. So Orientalists who are doing Quranic studies, there are pro-Quran or, uh, orient pro Orientalists, they really are impressed by the unique nature of the Quran. Uh, but they consider it a historical book. The scientists, the mathematicians, uh, the ling linguists, from that time to this time, as I mentioned that the top linguist will hood themselves and try to uh, snoop on the door of Prophet ﷺ and enjoy that wah, 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 subhanallah, subhanallah kind of thing, you know. They will be impressed by the beauty of the Quran. They could not resist uh, the, the, the attraction which was in the Quran. So uh, they, they, they said, no, no, I can't read this. It's so beautiful. I have to come and hear. So why don't you accept? No, 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 no. I don't want to accept Islam because Islam will take away wealth, take away my position as a community leader, this and that. I don't want Islam. But I want this beautiful, entertaining talk, which is amazing, Quran, you see? So that is why we have the experts, they decide that the Quran is miracle and by studying the Quran, Quran is self-evident, self-miracle. Uh, you don't need people, you don't need the Prophet Sallallahu to tell us that it's a miracle. In fact, the Quran tells the people Muhammad is the messenger of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now this was just a summary of a few things we mentioned uh, in our before session. Now we are going to uh, take the the meaning of tafsir. Uh, before we start, let me just go through uh, uh, some of the uh, words of Imam Ali alayhi salatu salam. He says, اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنِ وَاسْتَظْهِرُوهُ What is the meaning of اِسْتَظْهِرُوهُ? In Arabic language, when you use alif, seen, ta, as a prefix, that means seeking something. Asta'een. Iyaka nasta'een. Nasta'een. Asta'een. That means I am seeking help. Nasta'een. Istighfar. Istighfar. I am seeking. What's maghfira? Forgiveness. Istighfar. I am seeking istighfar. Maghfira. Istishfa, uh, shafa. I'm seeking cure. Okay. Istiftah, uh, fath, opening. I'm seeking openings session. When should I open my session? Opening something. I'm seeking. 
اوكي وات ار سو ميني وردز وذ استخاره استخاره اي ام سيكينج ان اوبشن اختيار اوكي اي ام كونفيوز اي نيد ا خيره اي نيد ان اوبشن سو اي ام سيكينج استخاره اي ام سيكينج اوبشن سو ذير ار لوتس اوف وردز يو كان سي سو هير استظهروه ذات مينز سيكينج ظاهر seeking vahir so imam ali says try to seek the obvious meanings of the quran the literal meanings of the quran remember literal meanings are priority if does not work then you go to the the secondary meaning the primary meaning iqra al quran read the quran not like parrots you see what happens in our traditional way of reading quran is holy month of ramadan we start reciting para after para Uh, volume after volume and then uh, on the 30th day um, like your game over finish i finished 30 para but how much did you get out of it how much did you not yes it's thawab i'm not denying that it's it's not thawab but at least you should have gone with one para one ayah try to try to uh, understand it you see try to understand this ayat of the quran that's 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 the main purpose of the quran so imam ali says استظهروا that means اعلموا ظاهر معاني know the 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 apparent meanings of it because apparent meaning is not a rocket science most of the people they can understand in that time the arabs the apparent but when you go to the secondary meaning and you try to do the the weed and deep interpretation that's where an expert is required that you can't do that but everybody is required to know at least the apparent meaning of the quran so and memorize it by your heart remember the prophet encouraged people memorize 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 and one of the things you mentioned in our previous session can the quran be memorized easily or with difficulty easily, easily. how can you tell me remind me Quran is how many ayats about 6, about 6000 ayat so uh, how can you finish the Quran if you res- if you memorize 10 ayat every day then how many uh, about how many years will take you to finish the Quran uh, nearly, nearly two years so in those days that's why we said Quran got spread by tawatur mem- thousand of uh, companion that memorize it You see, that's the minimum number, the more than thousand. But these were the top half is in of the Quran. So they had memorized it. So it got spread by Tawatur. And that's that's another intellectual concept that we can't doubt in the spreading of the Quran because one thousand they memorized. So two, three people, they they they, they were made mistake. Others would say, no, 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 the Prophet did not recite it, that this was not it. Or the written form, if it was, uh, there was error, the memorized form will correct the written so to us written is not too much of a a big deal in that time because majority they would not read they would memorize so the memorized text is more important to us because that's how the quran was spread and that's how that's how quran's authenticity is supported because it's spread by hundreds and thousands of people they had memorized it so therefore uh, there was too much incentive from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam memorize the quran memorize the quran you will go to the paradise you will never be uh, in the hell fire if you have memorized the quran so imam ali alaihi salam echoes the words of the prophet he says memorize it wahfadhu an dhahr al qalb fa inna allah ta'ala la yu'adhib qalban hafidh al quran wa al quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish a heart which had memorized quran that heart has it has salvation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this much man istadhara al quran wa hafidhahu wa halla halalahu wa harram haramahu adkhalahu allah bi al jannah whoever memorize whoever tries to understand the quran istidhar which doesn't require ulama <coughs> yes you can for us as non arabs we need some basic ulama books on quran or the interpretations of the Quran which are already in English or different language I do not call it translation because the only one can translate the Quran is 
Masuma Lesson. Masuma Lesson. Okay. We can't. Because one word can have several meanings. Yeah. So for uh, Shakir writes a word like it's a fascinating thing. In the United States, I had 17 copies of the uh, interpretations of the Quran in English. And we used to have halaqa. And I will give each one one copy from different interpreters. And I will read in Arabic. And I will tell me, what does Shakir say? What does Mir Ahmed say? What does Arbri say? What does... And surprisingly, uh, some of the words, most of them would differ. Like Al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Qadr. Qadr, some would say destiny. Some would say. Uh, Mir Ahmad uh, took the safe route. He said, surely we had descended it on the night of Qadr. <laughs> he left Qadr as it is. Because it's too gray word, too flexible for interpretation. So he, he just, we, surely we had descended it on the night of Qadr. Oh, I don't want to uh, go more what is Qadr. You can look into the tafsir, footnotes, but I'm going to put this. So that much uh, it's important that we do not call it translation. Because once we call translation, they compare it with Bible. They say, okay, we have four Bibles, we have 17 Quran. So we don't want to even go there. That, that's wrong. That's not right. So therefore, Imam Ali salatu says that try to seek the apparent meaning of the Quran. Try to memorize it. Observe its halal. So whoever observes the halal of the Quran, okay, and practices it. And whoever forbids the forbidden uh, things from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, make him enter the paradise because of this. So there's too much practical aspect. Read, pra read, memorize, practice. So if you can't read, memorize the whole Quran, try to make a habit in the holy month of Ramadan to at least memorize one ayat per day. So at the end of the holy month, you will have 30 ayat memorized and understand this ayat, you see? So it's very important for us to have this kind of uh, thing. So this is about, from Imam Ali. Then uh, remember I mentioned the word of Angel Kanu with the Orientalist in Germany. She's expert in Quran. She does tafsir of the Quran, but Orientalist way. So you can find on YouTube her tafsir on Surah Al-Rahman. So, <clears throat> and she does like istidhar of the Quran. Like whatever is apparent in the same way Imam Ali teaches. So what does this word mean? So she doesn't go too deep. She tries to use the, the apparent meaning. <clears throat> so Imam Ali says it's an ocean. وَبَحْرٌ لَا يَنْزِفُ mustanzifun. When you take away from ocean, uh, from the sea, it's a sea. The more you take, it will never end, never dry. It's an ocean which never dry. وَعْيُونٌ لَا يَنْضِبُهَا الْمَاتِحُونَ Springs, you know, springs of water, wells and those. So you take water, the well keeps rising, and the well water keeps rising and rising. But some of the wells, they dry. But this is a well or a spring which never dries. Take from it. وَمَنَاهِلْ لَا يَغِيضُهَا الْوَارِدُونَ And there's so much, so much in it to get that the more you take, it will never end. So that she said that we need to do a lot of research more and more. Quran has layers and layers. She said every community comes, adds layers of understanding to the Quran. This is an Orientalist, not a Shia or not a Muslim uh, interpreter. She's uh, 80 years old. She has done a lot of research in the Quran. She's expert. But to her, it's a historical book. To her, it's an impress, impressing book. Somebody told her that, why do you do uh, Quran? Quran is a Middle Eastern book. Why don't you do study on Bible? So she said that, uh, is Bible European book? Bible came to us from Middle East. And Quran came to us from Middle East. When Muslims were in Balkans and Spain, it came to Europe. So we have to investigate. Now it's an European artifact. We found. So we have to see how much we can benefit from the Quran. You see, the same way we do Bible studies, we need to do Quran studies. So, وَبَحْرٌ لَا يُدْرَكُ قَعْرٌ It's a sea. You can never go and touch the bottom of it. You will be never, Imam Ali says, how can we touch the bottom of the meanings of the Quran? And it is the word of who? Quran is the word of absolute. So Allah's word has to be, have some absoluteness in it. 
the characteristics because Allah is absolute. So if we limit the Quran to just one meaning or two meaning, the, 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 the layers, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam is limited. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam, though it's created, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept uh, uh, endless treasures in the Quran. And then, وَآكَامٌ لَا يَجُوزُ وَأَنْهَا الْقَاسِدُونَ These are piles of things in front. Wherever people they come, they don't pass by. They have to dig and take things out of it. You see, when you have like those hills, you just pass by the hills, ignore the hills. This is the, the Quran is a ty type of hill, or it has this kind of piles. You can't surpass it. You can't just ignore it. So then <clears throat> I've taken this part from the book of Al-Bayan of Sayyid Al-Khu'i. <clears throat> so what is, uh, what is the tafsir of the Quran? Definition of tafsir. So tell me, just even tell me something wrong. What does tafsir mean? Tafsir of the Quran. Understanding. Understanding of the Quran. Commentary or explanation. Okay. An explanation in the light of uh, a hadith sometimes and sometimes you explain yourself. Okay. Yeah. Maybe commentary of the Quran. Mahdi? No, you're not Mahdi. I forgot your name. Muhammad Abbas. You came late today. But thank you for coming. You came. That's important. Yes, so you know, you want to add something, Muhammad Abbas? You know that my name is Muhammad Abbas as well. I have two names, one hidden name, like Quran has a, 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 an obvious meaning, a hidden meaning. So my name is Muhammad Abbas, remember Abbas. But because when I was born, they, they named me Muhammad Abbas, but then my grandfather, supreme authority, he named me Safdar Razi. So in, my passport is Safdar Razi, but my family, they would call me because I was born in the middle of the day of Miladat of Muhammad al-Jawad and Hazrat Abbas. So they named me Muhammad Abbas because I was just a sandwich between these two days. So it was in Rajab. So that's why. So remember that I'm also Muhammad Abbas. Yes, you want to say? <laughs> Is it like uh, going, into, uh, going deep into the meaning of the Quran? Okay, good. An analysis of the whole literature yeah. and scriptures within them so they're analyzing obviously to get the main concept of what it's trying to portray the message of. okay i also think it's commentary yeah. it's commentary commentary my daughters would you like to share going in the depth yes <coughs> we have two daughters they were not here yesterday the yesterday's lecture has been uploaded on the YouTube, so later on you can take it from the uh, Molana as well, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> almost all of you are right in, in aspect, but let's see what Sayyid al Khui says. Seeking clarification of Allah's will and intention behind the words of his holy book. Allah has kept a word in the Quran. What did Allah mean? What is the meaning Allah wants to be told? Because an Arabic word might have several layers of the meaning. So Allah has given me the word. But I need to find out what was the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which, uh, which word, if there are more meanings, which meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. So seeking the clarification of Allah's will and intention behind the words of Holy Quran. So Allah used <clears throat> the intellectual system. He explains. So the tafsir is trying to find out what did Allah mean. How can I find out? I need, a Jibra I need Jibra'il salam, to come to me uh, and tell me that Allah's intention was this. You see? So I need, I need someone, I need the 12th Imam to tell me. But at this point, what can I do? What, what? So he said, don't worry, Sayyid al said, in my words, I'm just trying to be phrased like this. 
So don't worry about that. Okay. Don't get agitated. You don't need Jibreel. You know, check out because if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants you to understand something, He will use a system of communication. Okay. If I want you to understand something, if I give a lecture in Gujarati, <clears throat> that makes sense. None of you are Kojas here. Okay. So. Why is he speaking Gujarati or why is he speaking Arabic? We can't. We want, we want a, a system of communication which we can understand what he wants us to understand. So he says Allah used a system which was the system of Arabic language. Okay. And in this system, <clears throat> uh, when Arabs they communicate, even this is in Urdu and English and every. You see, in, the, in any system of language, when we communicate, see, uh, we take or we depend on literal meaning or metaphorical meaning. What do we do? Like I'll tell Mahdi, Mahdi, <clears throat> can you bring me a big apple? Okay, so he goes to this antique shop and we are living in New York. Okay, so he brings me, uh, and let's say I'm the I'm father of Mandy. <laughs> so uh, he brings me this monument of New York. You see, monument of New York, like skyscrapers and there's a Statue of Liberty and all that kind of stuff. You see, so when he brings me, Sharmiati, shah, I'm slapping, yuck, sakale. You said, you said, bring me a big apple. I brought you a big apple. I didn't mean metaphorically. I meant bring big apple. Don't bring the small, small sizes of apple. You see? Yeah, but uh, you said big apple. So I, did I tell you that bring, give you a clue that it's a metaphorical meaning, which I meant, like bring me a nice, solid, a big apple made out of silver or in a glass thing, this. I did not give you any clue. I literally told you bring me big apple you see so that means big apple <clears throat> so who's to blame me or him Mahdi. Mahdi. because he did not rely on a system which is practiced by the intellect depend on the literal meaning okay now Mahdi <clears throat> next day I tell him let me take care of you what's your name Murtaba okay so Murtaba, I told him that bring me big apple. Okay. And he went to the grocery and he found the biggest apple, nice juicy apple, and he brought me. You see? I slapped him. Sharam ni aati tujhe? Big apple yani mujhe New York ka wo chahiye. I want something about monument about New York. Why are you? What will I do with this? So here, who's to be blamed? Me, because I did not give him any clue. You see, in the intellectual society, he will tell me that why didn't you tell me that you need a kind of you need to give me some more uh, more indication that you need that that monument, something like that. You told me big apple, and this is big apple. You see, so I would, I would, I'm so I'm to be blamed because I did not give you enough clues. Okay. You see the difference? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating with me in a system which depends on literal meanings. You see? Unless if there's a clue to divert the meaning from literal to metaphorical or from primary meaning to the secondary meaning. This is very important concept of the use of the Quran. So uh, Allah used the intellectual means to communicate with the people and did not throw riddles. The plain, uh, the plain and easy system of communication which was available in that time was used by Allah. Plain basic system. Depending on the... So Allah is talking to me. So pretty much he's talking to me this, with the same system that I can understand and I can comprehend. So if Allah wants me to understand different meaning, he needs to give me clues. You see, he can't put me in hellfire and he did not give me any clues. Correct? 
So when the meanings are, on secondary meanings are intended, we will find another ayat of the Quran diverting the first primary meaning to secondary, or we will find hadith of Ahlul Bayt salam, which diverts the primary to secondary meaning. But without that, without hadith, without intellectual conflict in the words, uh, I can't go to the secondary meaning. Remember the mountains are moving? Previously, oh, how can the mountain move? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, secondary meaning. That's a poetic meaning, metaphor. But nowadays, no, we can't take the literal meaning. Mountains are moving, you see? So that is the, the, uh, the thing about... Um, <clears throat> uh, let me see because I... Oh my goodness. So let me just... Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also kept hidden treasures in the verses of Quran which requires interpretation. So we will stop here and have a break. And inshallah after break we'll continue. Sallallahu alayhi wa